Hallelujah. How many know that prayer is a conversation with God? You can go to God in conversation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're going to call our deacon Gigi up to open us up in prayer this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, we honor you, God. 
it in Jesus' name. No other name shall let me say but by the name of Jesus. Can I just do me a favor? Just get up, just get in your mouth, just get in your mind the name of Jesus that is great and that is wondrous. And somebody just do me a favor, just begin to put his name in the atmosphere.
but I've had a lot of wavering moments in my life too. Yes, yes. I've reached, I've had some oops. I did. But we serve a God who doesn't have to go through none of that repentance. He's not the son of man that he should lie. Lord, should he have to repent? But his holiness, church. And then he has the nerve to drape us in. Is anybody glad about his holiness this morning? The character of God, thank you, Pastor. Always consistent. Always provide.
minute. I'm sorry, brother. I had a minute. I had a minute. Because it's something about when you call on the name of Jesus. Things start fleeing from you. <laughs> call on the name of Jesus. Things begin to remove from you. The things that you don't need begin to fall off. The places that you don't need to be begin to become uncomfortable while you're in it. While you're in it. When I call on Jesus. <laughs> when I call on Jesus, I love more. Woo! Imagine that. When I call on Jesus, I do what he tells me to do. Imagine obedience coming when you call on the name of the Lord. Woo! You call on the name of the Lord and people begin to change. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I believe it though. See, that's our problem. It's not that when we call on Jesus, he doesn't move. It's that we don't have the faith to turn on the power switch. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't have that, you know, that little clap on, clap off. We don't have that. Then we get mad when Jesus don't start moving on your behalf. Don't be mad. <laughs> link up for greatness. <laughs> Instead of getting mad, just link up. Link up for greatness. Hallelujah. Woo. See, it's because it's something I don't know about you. There has been a few points in my life when I couldn't call nobody but Jesus. Sometimes we pick up stuff that don't belong to us. Go. Whew, okay, where are we at? I'm at Jesus, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. That's where we started. That's where I'm going to keep it. Because Jesus has a way of making everything all right. Since I don't care what it looks like. I, I, I don't care what it took for you to get here. I'm just here to tell you, I know that he will. Wow. <laughs> I know that he will. I know he will. Not that I read he will, but I tried him and I know him. I try him daily. And daily he keeps me. Daily. I'm telling you, if you seek him daily, <laughs> he'll provide the way. Because you have a plan, but God has a better plan. worship y'all and we still have Jesus I'm still there <laughs> see I can't play with these two <laughs> cause Jesus is the way yes the truth and the life <laughs> that means he'll make a way out of no way the truth of Jesus. That means in all your dark places, if you call on Jesus, he'll start turning on some light switches around you. And you'll be able to see and find your way. If you lost, call on Jesus. All right. Woo. Everybody stand. We're going to do this responsive reading. Yes, because I'm at Jesus. Speak the name of Jesus.
<laughs> we, while we linking up, we destined for greatness. It is read out of Mark 9, 30 to 41. I will read the unbolded and you will read the bolded. And at the end, we will read together. Amen. Amen. They left that place uh -huh. and passed through Galilee. Uh -huh. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching his disciples he said to them the son of man is going to be delivered into the hands of men and they will kill him and after three days he will rise We'll talk about that later. They, <laughs> who, they came to Cap, Cap, Capernaum. Capernaum. Okay. They came to Capernaum when he was in the house. He asked them, What are you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because of the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Ooh, wee. That's why I said we'll talk later. <laughs> Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last <laughs> and the servant of all. He took a little child whom he placed among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Whoever comes, whoever welcomes one of these little children, in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. Uh -huh. Teacher, said, we saw someone driving out demons <coughs> in your name, and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. <laughs> I'm, <saying. laughs> I'm trying not to. Because, woo, okay, because he wasn't one of them. Do not stop him, Jesus said, for no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us altogether. Truly I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose their reward. May the Lord have the blessing to the reading and the hearing and how about the doing of his word. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to go ahead and do the church affirmation. Yeah. May the, uh, <laughs> let's go. May, May the affairs of your life be met with undeniable victory as the Lord is messing with the theology of those who oppose you. They will ask the question, who did it? And we shall say, God did it. Because God did it. Hallelujah. Let's give a hand clap because God did it. Hallelujah. I need a guy to do a whole lot for me. I'd like you to clap a little longer. Because <laughs> God did it. Amen. Amen. I do. Let's do the church motto. It is on the back of your programs. <clears throat> this is the Lord's church, and Jesus is Lord. This is the church that's being established by his word. This is the church that love is building. The gates of hell shall not prevail. This is the Lord's church, and Jesus is is Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for being Lord of our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luxie, come up and do the extravagant welcome for me, please. 
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Yeah, my name is Lucy. Uh, most of y'all know me, uh, but for those who don't, I'm the most loving, caring person you probably ever want to meet with everybody. Uh, and for the visitors, I love y'all too. Uh, people online, love y'all as well. Um, and uh, this is Church of Love Building. This is correct. And welcome. Amen. Amen. Look, the youth, the church that love is building, when he knows that. Because I know you can feel it when you walk through the door. I haven't met a person that walked through this door and didn't say they, they didn't feel the love. See, who love covers a whole lot. It gives you everything you need. Now, here's a part where we can all get on it. Let's, it is offering time. Can we praise God? It's offering time. We give them tithely for those who want to give electronically. For those that are out there, you can bless us with an offering if you would like to. We are on Tithely under Empowering Work Ministries, Inc. If you are here, come on from the back as your option. church meeting. Yes. We accomplished a lot, mm -hmm. uh, most of what we uh, wanted to. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. guys have all, were working and know our mindset, the mindset of me and um, <coughs> church meeting as far as uh, what we need to do as a church. Um, one of the things you guys talked about last Sunday was our church anniversary and that yes, you guys wanted to do something as far as dinner celebration afterwards on Sunday, taken away right from what you guys said. So right now we have a place that mm -hmm. is on reserve um, in um, Boothland, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. If you ever want to celebrate with me and Rodney, mm -hmm. uh, one of those rooms in that area. Um, so we, um, that's okay, that's okay. We point them toys and play them. So Amen. We can play. <laughs> so, um, the event is going to be February 11th, right after service, starting at 3. Uh, more information will come. What I, most of the rooms that I searched for um, expected a $50, $50, $50 person room. That was the minimum. Uh, minimum, um, $50 will be, I'll get to that, no, but $50 room, and I said we would have 30 to 40, so we still will have to pay for 50, um, but if we get 50, that's great, that'll be beneficial for us, um, so right now, I'll, just, I'll bring more information as it comes, I'll keep you up to date, but right now, I'm looking, we're looking at $50 per person um, to attend, 
Uh, what I do need as soon as we can get it is a list of people, uh, especially those that were there last week, um, to sign up um, so we can get um, your name onto a list of, of Deacon Georgie and Pierre Pauls. Um, get to her with your name, anybody you know, Will, um, that's interested or can't, you know wants to buy, pay for their dinner. Uh, please get to her as soon as possible. So I do have an accurate number to give that facility and the caterers and all of that. Amen? Amen. Uh, I got a room that just is for the room, you know, just is for dinner, um, for a fellowship, not anything we pay for or place for Courtney to screw up the ceiling. So it's basically uh, a blank room uh, for us to sit down, have dinner, and fellowship, and enjoy ourselves. Amen? Amen? So please get to her. Um, I'll get to Deacon as soon as you can so, we, so I can get that list and continue to make plans. As I said, I will continue to um, update you on all the information um, in a definite, but please keep them, just keep $50 in bed. Amen. 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 Praise the answers, all right. And then the praise dancers are getting ready to come. Can we say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. And I'll talk after the praise dancers. All right, this first week. about the things that he was before he came to Christ and like he was a little bit shady right <laughs> that's what me and my kids call it he was a little shady but let me tell you what God does with shady people uh -huh. about it. God takes shady people and removes the shade uh -huh. Uh -huh. God does some things, and I'm glad that God is not like us. See, somebody do something to you, you don't want nothing else to do with them. You want to throw them away. You you don't want to love them while they in a bad space. But thank God, thank God, thank God that he chose to love us through our good and through our bad. Amen? Purposeful praise. <laughs> <laughs> you love me through my pain. Yes, yes. Sorry, yeah. You love me through my good. You love me through my good. That's what you love me through my bad. You love me through my good. And you love me through my bad. Yes. You didn't erase my future yeah. because of my past. Uh -huh. I'm glad you loved me through my good and my bad. Yeah. Through my good and my bad. Yeah. You love me through my good. You love me through my bad. Thank you. 
clip right here. You keep on. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You better than me. Yeah. yeah. You better. You keep on. Uh -huh. Loving me. Yeah. yeah. You keep on. Uh -huh. keep on loving me. Yeah. You keep right on. Uh -huh. Loving me. Hey. Yeah. Hey. session please ma'am please sir please make sure that you get all of your information amen to us everyone is invited amen lunch will be provided amen and so uh, please make your way amen to the session if you get your name on a list you'll know the things that you're supposed to bring is that all right amen amen, amen. amen. do we have visit we have visitors for the first time amen can we celebrate that? the Lord for your presence. Amen. As we used to say, in my old, you could have went any other place, or you could have stayed home. Amen. Do me a favor, saints. Don't let them leave without you at least shaking their hand Amen. and showing them some tangible love. Is that all right? Amen. 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 While, while um, we were um, talking about Jesus, I heard this, call the name, call the name, call the name of Jesus, he will save you, deliver and bind, call the name of Jesus, call the name, call the name, call the name of Jesus, 
He will deliver. Say that right. Call the name of Jesus. Amen. And so we learn to call on. Amen. The name of Jesus. Amen. We should sing the name of Jesus is so sweet. I love his music to repeat. Fills my joy, makes me whole and complete. The precious name of Jesus. If you have your Bibles, amen, we're going to get out early today. Amen. And we all know what that means when I say that. Amen. Somebody said, I'm Amen. Amen. I didn't hold oil last week. You did not. Amen. So we bless the Lord. Amen. How many of you know you should never hold back on your praise? Oh, Lord. Amen. Oh, you shouldn't do it. Tell your neighbor, don't do it. Oh, Amen. It don't matter what the people next to you say. Don't hold back on your praise. But well, Pastor, you're not in the scripture. The Bible says, quench not the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. When you have a praise, you ought to give God a praise. Amen. And I want you to know that my praise is so sustainable and palpable. Amen. That when I don't feel like it, I still got to pray. Sir, even when. That's the best help one. Yes, it is. Amen. When I don't feel like it, I still have a praise. Yes. Amen. My emotions come second or third or fourth or fifth to my praise. Right. Amen. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because if I stay in my emotions, I'll never get to the place where God is. I want y'all to hear what I'm saying. If you stay in your emotions, you'll never get to the place. Oh my, just for well, God inhabits the praises. Uh huh. God inhabits the praises of His people, and if you stay in your emotions, you'll never get to the place where God inhabits. Right. Amen. Because in in Judah, God is known in praise. Amen. God is known, and I'm so glad, evangelist. Amen. That I learned how to bring the sacrifice. Uh -huh. right. Of praise. Yeah. What does that mean? I don't feel like it. Uh -huh. Amen. It's going to cost me something, yeah. but it's going to be a good sacrificial praise. It will be. Amen. Pastor, do you have a sacrificial praise? Yeah. Every day, yes, I do. Every moment, I got a sacrificial praise because this is the day yeah. that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice. Amen. Amen. And be glad in it. And it makes no sense for you to be sad and depressed. Amen. When you say you got Jesus. When you say. Amen. You got Jesus. So we bless the Lord. All right, let's get to the word. Amen. I celebrate our young people. Amen. Thank God for our young people. Amen. We have some things that we're doing and putting in place for the young people. Amen. The parents have agreed to it. Amen. And so we're going to implement it. Amen. And we're excited. Amen. For what God is doing in our young people and what he's establishing in our young people. They're no longer kids. Amen. 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 They're young men, young men and young women. Amen. And with being a young man and young woman, because a whole lot. Y'all, y'all can remember. Amen. Come a whole lot of mood and come a whole lot of attitude. All parents. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Help them to help God to help you. Amen. As you raise children. I'm just trying to help y'all. Amen. I wanna, I, listen, I gotta dance. The ones that I'm responsible for are over 30 years old, and I bless the name of the Lord. Amen. But there were times I wanted to kill them. Amen. But hitherto had the Lord helped me, and so therefore God helped them. Amen. God bless you, Thaddeus. Amen. We praise the Lord for you being here. John, the fifth chapter. Amen. See, I'm going to teach today. Amen. I'm not going to be excited. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Everybody all right? Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm saddened by people who don't go to church no more. Amen. I'm saddened by that, Tosh. I'm really sad by that. Amen. God has... You know, this is the church of the love is building and the it gates is. of hell shall, shall not be uh -huh. This is the Lord's church and Jesus is Lord. Two. It's one. Two is better than one. Amen. I want you to know. Okay. But we'll teach about that. Amen. And I'm so glad. Amen. It's the link up. I've had a whole lot of link ups. Excuse me. I just don't want to embarrass you. If I speak my truth, I have a whole lot of lingams. A whole lot. Uh, I'm 60, I'll be 63. Amen. May 31st, I'll be 63. I've had a whole lot of lingams. Mm -hmm. 
This is the name of this church. We speak truth. Yeah. Amen. I have a whole lot of link ups, but the greatest link up I ever got was Jesus. Amen. We used to sing a song Jesus got a hold of me, and he won't let me go. Jesus got a hold. Y'all not happy because Jesus, and he won't. I had some link ups, and I wanted to get rid of them. And they got, they surely got rid of me. Amen. But Jesus got a hold. Amen. Wrapped up. I'm not going to tie it up. I'm My link up with Jesus is when I'm weak, that when I am weak, uh -huh. he is strong. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. Amen. He'll never let me go. I'm just trying to help somebody. That's why you got to link up with people that know God. Amen. 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 Not people that know religion, but know God. Not people that just know church, but know God. Amen. Because church will fail you, but God will never fail you. Amen. You got to get God so good down in your spirit. Amen. That when the church people get on your nerves, you still come to church. Come on. Still I'm just going to help y'all. Faith and encouragement. Right? Amen. Amen. You still come if the saints get on your nerves. Amen. And what you realize is the more the saints get on your nerves, the higher up you go. I appreciate the folks in church that I appreciate the folks in church that told me you're not it, you're not, it's not gonna happen, you're not the one. And they put me in a box. Amen. I kept on showing up. John the fifth chapter. I'm just trying to help somebody today. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I want you to be free. Right. I want you to be free. John the fifth chapter, starting at the thank God for deacons that are be that are here. Amen. Pray for Pastor Dana. Amen. She must be out doing ministry work and some of the other saints that are not here. You know, sometimes there's an A crew, B crew, C crew. Amen. Mix an A, B, and C crew. Amen. But tell your neighbor, no matter the crew, Jesus is here. All right. They put this mic in front of me so I can't see. All right. John, the fifth chapter, verse one. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. Amen. And Jesus went into Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which the Hebrews call, uh, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. Amen. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving. They were waiting for the moving, amen, of the water. Amen. There's some folks in church, y'all sitting here now waiting for the move of the water. Y'all still waiting for something to move. Amen. I want you to know that sometimes you got to move and you got to tell your neighbor, you have to bring the move. That's not how, that's not how it happened in here. And uh, one angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. And then whoever stepped in first, uh-huh, because we y'all still believe in church like that. If it happened for uh, Deacon Pierre Paul, then it's the services. Amen. Stepped in first at the stirring of the water was made well. Everybody say well. 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 Uh huh. And whatever disease they had, amen. Whatever they had, whatever they had. Uh -huh. whatever they had. Uh -huh. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity for thirty-eight years. Hallelujah. When Jesus saw him lying there, and knew that he had been there in that condition for a long time. A long time. Thirty-eight years for a long time. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. 38 years for a long time. It's a long time to be burdened with something. Yes, it is. Uh-huh. Knew he had been there. Jesus said to him, do you want to be made whole? Uh -oh. Some other versions say well, but I like the word whole. W-H-O-L-E. Do you want to be made whole? The sick man answered him, and sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. After 38 years, all of the, all of the years being at the pool, he was never the one put in the pool first. But while I am coming, another person, while I'm going to the pool, somebody jumps in the pool before me. Aren't you glad in the presence of God is not like the pool of Bethesda? All of us can jump in at the same time. Right. Uh, the God Almighty, amen, amen. Courtney can jump in first, and then you can jump in second, and everybody can be healed. All right, Jesus said to him in verse 8, Rise, take up your bed and walk. Now, there's a lot in this scripture, amen, that I could bring out, but I'm just going to just talk a little bit. It's, it is evident, amen. Is that Matthew? Uh, he's, that's all right. He's going to be two after a while. Amen. It is evident. That this poor brother knew of his condition. All right, he's with his dad. 
and was not denying his need. I want you all to really think about this. He knew his condition. He had this condition for 38 years and didn't deny his condition. He was not in a state of denial. You know, there's some saints and people of God that are in a state of denial about their condition. He'll be all right. He'll be a little sleepy. So if you, if you want to get something or anything from God, Honesty is the best policy. You know, I thought about this and I thought about people that go to therapy. And I love people that go to therapy. But therapy is not helpful if you lie to the therapist. Therapy is not helpful if you tell part of the truth. What's the point? I have no amen in here. Amen. Marriage counseling, couples counseling, it don't help you. If you don't tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. What is the use of going to the physician if you're not going to tell them what's wrong with you? Now, now, some of us go to the doctor and we don't tell the whole story. We don't tell the doctor where the real problem is. Okay. We tell the doctor where the surface thing is. And we, I'm getting ahead of myself. We want a quick fix, amen, for something that's on the surface, but we don't really tell Jesus or the doctor where the real problem is. All right. This man had been a victim of his condition for 38 years. He had been coming to the house of mercy for many years. And he found no help. God forbid that our church would be a place where people come for mercy and get no help. He was dependent upon others, but he wanted to be free. Because if he didn't want to be free, he'd have stayed home. And never asked the people, amen, take me to the place of mercy. Goodbye. Aren't you happy, amen, that every now and then you feel like coming to the place of mercy, not the place of judgment. Amen. Church has been a place of judgment and shade for too long, but I need a place of mercy. I can get shade at home. I can get shade at work. Amen. I can get shade at my job, but when I come to church, I want mercy. Mercy. Amen. I don't need you to tell me I'm going to hell. I know what I did last night. Amen. I don't need you to tell me. I need you to tell me. That, that, guess what? He looked beyond your faults. Woo! Give me some hope for my condition. Oh, help me you here. Amen. Give me hope for my condition. When I come into the place of mercy, I want to love, peace, and joy. He's already got hell at home, so he knew. And his friends brought him. They brought him. I wasn't going to preach. I'm going to be preaching. Took him to the pool every single day. Was the interest they took him? I'm going to get there. He was without strength to get in. They brought him to the pool, deacon. They brought him, but he didn't have enough strength uh -huh, to get in and get his own healing. The same ones, watch this, the same ones uh -huh, that brought him to the pool. Uh, left him there. Yes, left left here. Can I help you? Sometimes yeah. people will bring you, then they'll leave you. Oh yeah. my God. But you got to be careful who brings you. Because yeah. they might leave you. Yeah. They, might. They, might. They, might. they might bring you to the right place, but then they won't take you any further to get your heat. All right. Isn't it interesting that everybody knew that he was unable and weak to get in, but they brought him to the place, but when the waters were troubled, they weren't there to help them get in. Because mm. there are some people in your life, they can bring you to the water, but they can't help you. Okay. Uh -huh. Tell you, neighbor, everybody don't have your deliverance. Yeah. Go God about it. Everybody don't have your healing. Amen. Some people can only bring you to the door. Amen. But there are other people that can get you from the pool and to, okay. to the wall. Mm -hmm. the wall. Yeah. They knew he was weak, the evangelist, and unable. And but they left him right before the waters were troubled. Amen. In verse 6 it says, when Jesus saw him lie there, he knew that he had been now there a long time. A long time. A long time. But Jesus said, Will you listen, no matter how long you've been there. Hallelujah. Good God Almighty, do you still want to be whole? Uh -huh. See, sometimes when we're in a place for a long time, we give up hope. Uh-huh. But this man still kept, see, that, listen, you got to give God something to work with. Yes. Now I'm going to drop something. You got to give God something to work with just a little bit. Just as long as you got a little bit left in the tank that you can say, God, help me. Right. Amen. God, strengthen me. God, bring my help. Okay. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Wanted to be made whole. So God knows 
where we are. You can't fool God. God knows who you are. You can't fool God. God knows what you are. I'm going to help you. I don't need nobody to broadcast who I am. I'm well aware of who I am. I'm well aware. Amen. Amen. I'm well aware. I'm well aware of the work that God needs me to do for me. Amen. But can you show me a place of grace, accountability, all right, and mercy? Amen. And see, the problem with the church is, amen, we, we try to, we try to, you know what? My bishop used to say this. You can't, we try to scale the fish before we catch it. Amen. We try to scale the fish before we catch it. Amen. How about catching fish, then trying to, okay. Come on. Come on. All right. God is omnipotent, powerful, all powerful. I'm the present, knowing all. Let me put this in here. I'm going to help y'all. The devil don't have no power. None. Amen. I'm going to help y'all. Some of the saints told y'all to be afraid of the devil like the devil was equal with God. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Listen. The devil is not equal to God. There's only one God eternal in the heaven. And God is way above the... Okay. I just want to put that I want to correct erroneous theology. Amen. That's why sometimes the saints got rid of testimony service because the saints would test the line and talk more about what the devil did than they were talking about what God did. Mm. All right. So, God knows where you are. So, Jesus knows that how long you've been dealing with your soul. Mm -hmm. But He's still asking you a question Would you be made whole? Will you leave this place the same way that you came in? That part. But are you ready? Because you got to be ready for healing. Mm hmm. Right? So there's no need to be ashamed of having a need. Anybody got a need today? I got a need. I, I came to church because I had a need. Right. Amen. Listen, I didn't come, amen, to be cute. Now, amen. It's okay. I look cute. Amen. But I did not come to impress the deacons, saints, and friends. Amen. I came up in Pentecost. Amen. We came and got what we needed. I'm going to help you. I came to get what I needed. No matter what, they, what I look like when I got it. If I had to roll on the floor to get it, if I had to foam at the mouth to get it, amen, tell your neighbor, ain't no shame to get what you need. Listen, those people that are addicted to drugs, they're not ashamed to get it. No, they won't be not ashamed. And they're not afraid to ask anybody that, listen, I'm going to help you out today. But why is it when Jesus is the healer? Amen. We are ashamed to. Okay. Because pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before. But some of us are proud. Every man, woman, boy, and girl has a need of something. The problem is that we do not recognize our need. Well, we recognize our need and we don't want to do nothing about it. We recognize our need. Amen. But we go to the wrong place to get our needs met. Okay. Oh, yeah. Amen. It's sort of like when Pastor was long, young, and y'all don't know nothing about this when we were everybody in this room. Look, look at Penub in all the wrong places. Right. Amen. I was looking Penub. Amen. I think that was Eddie Murphy. Amen. Y'all don't know nothing about that. On Saturday Night Live. Amen. I was looking Penub. Amen. And I want you to know some of the saints is looking Penub. Jesus. In all the wrong places. You sanctify, but you're looking Beware. for uh, They're looking for <laughs> Right. Hallelujah. But if you have a need today, you're in the right place. Yes, when Jesus comes, all of Satan's power is broken. It is. When Jesus comes, he'll wipe the gloom yes. away. He'll take the gloom. Y'all don't know that song. Yes. Fill your life. Yes, Sarah Jordan Powell. And fill your life with glory. For all is changed. Much of that Jesus come in to stay. Amen. Jesus, Jesus is preoccupied with the idea of wholeness. With the idea of wholeness. And you have to be excited about the possibility of wholeness. Jesus is in the healing business. Now I'm going to say that again. Jesus is still in the healing business. Now just because you don't believe and you don't have enough faith to believe don't mean that God cannot heal. Right. Does not mean that. See, God shows up where God can be all God. All God. Amen. In the old days, we didn't know certain things, and so we had to pray about certain types of healing. Now you can go to the doctor. But tell your neighbor, there's some healing that I really need God to do. Yeah. I, I need really, I really, really I need God. Yeah. I really, mm -hmm, I'm getting good here. Uh -huh. This was prophesied of him of old. Surely he has borne our griefs. And he carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted, but he was wounded. For our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him, and 
wait for y'all to give me the rest of the verse. By his stripes. <laughs> By his stripes. All right, I got to take him back to Sunday school. Amen. By his stripes, we are healed. This is peculiar because Jesus was not a doctor. By the profession, Jesus was a carpenter. I'm going to get ready and he was a carpenter. But carpenters know something about brokenness. Yes, they do. Uh, and the need for the broke and the fragmented to be made whole. Uh -huh. and the Bible declares we are his workmanship. When you see me, you see the work of God. Amen. I might be broken, but I'm still the work of God. I might be wounded, but I'm still the work of God. Uh, we are his handiwork created in him. God, who is whole, does not create anything broken. Amen. When Matthew and when all of us were born, we were not born broken. I'm going to help you, amen. Any brokenness that you have experienced in your life, God did not create it. Matter of fact, God don't even recognize your brokenness other than the fact that you need to be healed from it. And it is the desire of God that you would no longer be broken, but be made whole. Uh -huh. The work of creation in you is complete. God leaves no work undone. The work of completion is already done. He that has begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. You see, when we carry something for any long period of time, it becomes part of you. Y'all want to hear this. Amen. That's why the Bible says, watch who you hook up with, because he, he who you, or she who you hook up with, you become one with that person. Right. Watch out. Right. I won't go in there. We got young people. Amen. And our young people have a habit, visitors, of reading scripture and trying to figure out what it means before it's time for them to understand what it means. Right. And then, then they surmise about it themselves and then they fail to ask the question of the person. That's it. Amen. All right. So I won't go into this. So, you know, and sometimes the thing or illness or brokenness that we have becomes our viewpoint. We see everything from our brokenness. Yes. We see everything through our broken lens. I don't want to come to church. I don't want to deal with the saints because the saints broke me. The saints broke me, and so I see everything broken. Don't you know you can come into a place of healing and have a lens of brokenness and see everything as broken? See, broken people have a way of finding broken stuff. Yes, they do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Broken people have a way of saying, Ooh, she broken. Oh, he broken. Amen, amen. Broken people don't have a way of seeing hope. Mm -hmm. Impacts your whole well-being. It becomes your idea, identity. See my brokenness. So I was excited. I mean, Pastor Sir Jazz took me to, I had to go sing somewhere. Amen, with the young people. Amen. And we were there in the old church. Mother Bishop got up. And Mother said, they said I got cancer. Mother Bowers, Bishop Bowers. She said, saints. They said, I'm diagnosed with cancer. She said, but I bring my cancer to church. Come on. Come on. Right. Bring it with you. That means her cancer was not going to be her identity. It meant for some of us, when we get a bad experience, we stay home. But mother said, no, I'm bringing it. Cancer? Mother was declaring that cancer has no power over me. I have the ability to bring it, and it don't have. Okay, y'all didn't get it. Y'all didn't get it after a while. Amen. When the church mother gets on your nerves and you stay home, mother got the power. Right. But when I learned a long time ago, when the saints and people got on my nerves and I felt broken and discouraged, I brought my discouragement to church. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Right. To show the people of God, if I'm broken, I'm still here. Yeah. Right. I'm still at the pool. I'm still at the place called mercy. All right. All right. What is interesting about brokenness is that sometimes we use it as a badge of honor. It's yeah. not brokenness. Yeah. I'm still broken. Uh, and then if the saints don't pay attention to your brokenness, you say there's no anointing in church. You leave, they don't care because the saints didn't play into your brokenness. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like in the movie. Anybody see the movie Jaws? I saw the movie Jaws. I love the movie Jaws. There's a segment in the movie Jaws. Oh, you saw the movie Jaws. That's good, son. That's a good movie. You weren't scared? Yeah, because y'all don't, don't, that don't scare y'all. Amen. So you see the movie Jaws, and in the movie Jaws, Amen. They sit around the table. They talk about the shark, Tyrone. And then they sit at the table and say, whoa, I got bit by a shark. Look at my score. And the other one said, oh, man, that ain't nothing. Look at this score. Then the other one said, oh, I was eaten by a shark. Look at this score. And that's what we do in church. Look at my score. 
Scorch. Not a praise service. We have a look at my. They lied on me. Scorch. They scandalized my name. They wouldn't let me sing. That's my star. And we come to church and wonder why the power and the waters aren't stirred. Because you don't come for healing. You come to parade your Scars. My God today. Wow. We compare scars. What would happen if we all came to church and brought our scars and praised God for the fact that he brought us through? Because a scar is evidence that you came through. Now hear what I'm saying. A scar is evidence that the healing has happened. It is a reminder. Maybe if you look at your scar differently, say, and the place that got me here, I thank God for it, wasn't Thank God. I, when I was a little boy, I put my hand in the trash can and I got a scar. Uh -huh. Two years old, my Uncle George still reminds me. We have Thanksgiving dinner. He's like, huh, huh, but you learn how to put your hand in that trash can and get them scars. <laughs> Guess what? I thought I put my hand in trash cans and get scars. Why? You don't do it again. I won't do that again. So there are those of us that are broken and we think. Y'all know what things fake brokenness when they come to church and pretend they're not broke. Oh, and, the, and I'm going to tell you how I know they're faking because they be judgmental. Mm, to, everybody else. to everybody else. That means you're faking that you're broken. Mm -hmm. So remember, there are people that wear it as a badge, see my brokenness, and there's these people that fake it. So tell your neighbor, don't fake this till you make it. It's dangerous to your health. <laughs> faking is dangerous to your health. Uh -huh. Broken and they fake it. They're ashamed of what happened to them. Mm -hmm. They bear their brokenness internally. So there are people that wear it on their sleeves so you can see it. And I think they, you know, we have, but then there are those that want to lay hands and be broken. Those that want to preach and be broken. Those that want to prophesy and be broken. Mm. And they bear their brokenness internally as guilt and embarrassment and it eats them up on the inside like cancer. Wow. They don't trust nobody. Mm -hmm. They can't love nobody. Mm -hmm. They don't show no emotion to nobody. To nobody. They're bitter, to resentful, <laughs> and unhappy. They but they shout in tongues uh, and dance, and dance yeah. prophesy, and preach. Listen, I'm going to help you out. Don't prophesy over me and you bitter. Wow. Oh, I'm right here. Don't preach to me, amen, if, you hide your, if you're bitter on the inside and you're wounded, amen, nothing worse than a bitter and broken preacher. Because guess what? At some point, you're going to preach from your brokenness. And it won't be deliverance. There's a difference. I've seen preachers. We were somewhere preaching, amen, and a young woman was leading a worship service, and God said she bitter. Y'all were there. God says she bitter. And so when they called me up to preach, I stopped the service and said, let me pray for you. Never preach or pray from a place of brokenness or bitterness because, or anger. Because what you do, you project that over the people. Then you wonder why your people end up bitter. Why you end up broken. These people live a life, even though they fake it, they feel unworthy. So you try to hide Amen. But you're just like a tall person that sleeps in a short bed. When you cover yourself in your head, your feet show. When you cover your feet. Amen. You're like the emperor. <laughs> Amen. I've seen people that pay a praise, but they bitter on the inside. <laughs> baby, that's not a real, that's not a joyful praise, baby. That's a bitter praise. That's a praise I'm trying to work out out. Praise. So now, people don't want to be whole. You know why people don't want to be whole? Because it requires change. I told y'all I wasn't going to preach my talk. It, it requires change, and we don't like change. Some of us want to be, we, some of us have gotten so broken and so tore up from the floor up, and we've been faking it so long that it becomes our way of life. Wow. Amen. Well, you, so that's the way it's got to be. Now, we bring you to the pool, and we leave you, and you got to do your work, but you don't want to do it. All right. Amen. So you get mad at us and say it's our fault that you're not. Right. And then it's our fault. And then it's our fault. All right. So when you live your life broken, you live beneath your privilege. Wow. So much more. Come on, evangelist. Take the mic. <laughs> I'm just trying to help you. Some of y'all are living beneath your privilege. Could you listen? I have learned not to be broken because I don't want to pass brokenness to my son. Come on. 
And I don't want to, I don't want to pass brokenness to my grandbabies. Good God Almighty. And if I see brokenness in my children, I heal them. Y'all know I got four grandbabies and every time I see them, I pray no brokenness. Nothing broken. How many of you ever pray for your children? Nothing broken. Uh-huh. Nothing lost. Good God Almighty. No, Y'all don't hear what I'm, don't do it, Dion. Dion, pray over them in the midnight hour. Not because they're not going to receive you in the daytime. They're going to fight your spirit in the daytime. Amen, amen, amen. They wait, let them wake up greasy, nothing broken. Hey, hey, good God Almighty, all wholeness, all is well. Peace and abundance over my children. Because they're going to roll their eyes at you, Dion, if you do it while they're awake. So don't fight with them while they're awake. Let them wake up greasy. <laughs> Woo! Tell your child, you're going to wake up greasy one morning. Don't worry about it. Amen, amen, amen. And when you see them, Tasha and Sharice acting crazy, just say nothing broken. Good God Almighty, I'm trying to help y'all today. Amen, amen. When you see him acting out of order, amen, don't feed into out of order, feed into wholeness. Right. Oh my, see that's the problem with church. We've been feeding into the brokenness of people and not seeing them as God sees them. God sees you whole, entire, and lacking nothing. Nothing broken. Ah, Holy Ghost, nothing broken. Woo. Somebody say it loud, nothing broken. Nothing broken. Lay your hands on yourself and say, nothing broken. Nothing broken. Brokenness, brokenness is not my destiny. It is not. Nothing broken. Woo. Good God Almighty, if you got a spouse that's broken, don't talk to him about it. Lay hands on him in the midnight hour and say, nothing broken. Nothing broken. Woo. See, brokenness will make you fight your people. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'll make, you, it'll make you fight your people. Yes, it will. It will there's some things I'm not going to argue with you about, but there's some things in the midnight hour just right. lay hands on you yeah, in yeah, Jesus' yeah. name. Come on. Make you fight your people. And then when you wake up and you say, oh, babe, did you touch me? You say, ha, 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 ha. Praise the Lord. I'm trying to help some of y'all. I'm trying, hey, I'm trying, I'm trying to help y'all like the bishop help. There's some things you can't argue about. You just got to pray. Sometimes at the dinner table when the arguments start, you just my my God. The word of the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Uh -huh. Arise and go down to the potter's house and help somebody. Uh -huh. And there I'm going to cause you to hear my word. So Jeremiah said, I went down to the potter's house, not Bishop James. I went down to the potter's house. And there God was. Uh -huh. He was making something. Because uh -huh. uh, God don't tell you everything that he's making. He does not. Since God don't tell you everything that he's making. I'm going to help you out. And sometimes God will tell you what he's making but not telling you the way that you're going to go to get to where he's going to make it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I'll tell you, God will tell you, God will tell you the beginning and the end, but you got to perfect the middle. I don't get what I'm saying. Oh my God, you gotta work the you gotta work that middle, amen, till the wheels fall off. Yes, now hear what I'm saying. You gotta work that middle, amen, till your head is racking. Right. Amen. Till you ugly cry, you gotta work the middle. Oh, Y'all hear what I'm saying? The ugly cry, you gotta work the middle, amen. amen. Sometimes I'm gonna cuss you out. I'm working the middle. I'm working the middle. Huh? Because the middle gets rough, don't mean I give up in the middle. Because after this, there shall be glory. After this, yeah. if I work the middle yeah. right. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Woo! Good God Almighty, I'm getting excited. I'm, listen, I have perfected. My son said perfect work in the middle. Uh -huh. Amen. Don't get all in drama and get all upset and say this is just the middle part. Right. Uh -huh, because after you have suffered a while. Right. Oh, my God. Listen, after you have, God will strengthen you and make you hope after and establish you. See, the problem is we don't want the stuff that comes before. Right, right. I wasn't in Sunday school. I try to stay out of Sunday school so I don't, you know, over talk the saints. He said he went down. He said I saw a vessel made of clay, and it was marred in the hand of the potter. See, here's the thing: the saints will see you on the potter's wheel and see you marred and throw you away. Wow! The saints have a good way of seeing stuff marred and throwing it away. You a liar? I throw you away. I saw you on the pole last night. Amen. I'll, I'll throw you away. <laughs> but you saw me at the place where the pole was. Well, uh, listen, I'm just going to help. 
You saw me. But here's the thing. So what you did is got to the bishop before I to tell on me to cover you, but the bishop wasn't smart enough to ask you, how did you know that Caprice was on the pole last night? Now, Caprice would tell me. Caprice going to come to me and say, Pastor, I was on the pole. Pray my strength in the Lord. Because you have to out the saints before they out you. Now, to help you, the person who got healing was Caprice. Right. Not the person that told it, because the person that told it, their spirit was wrong. Because your intention was to embarrass her. But ye who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, lest you be overtaken in a fall. You forgot that you are susceptible to fall. So when I restore complete, I do it in secret, in the spirit of love. Your motive was wrong. Yeah. Hallelujah, you were foul. So now you condemn. And Caprice is free. Caprice is free because pastor, this is what I did. And I did it because my kids were hungry. So saints, all saints would say, mind your business unless you got money to give Caprice to feed her children. Y'all hear what I'm saying? If you don't have no money to help her, why are you condemning her on the pole? So I know old church mothers that would say, baby, I want you off the pole, so here's $300. That part. Come on, Come on. <laughs> but the self-righteous saints that say you on a pole and don't do nothing to help you to get off, okay? Uh, well, help you get no job. And don't do nothing to help you. Don't right? Do don't get no application. But I'd rather have a church where I know that folks is on the pole. I can pray you off the pole, but I can't pray off your foul spirit. Yeah. That part. Oh. And like, I'm sorry, Miss. I'm gonna help somebody today. Amen. Tell you, speak your truth to power. Amen. You can't be healed from something when you're hiding. My God. Amen. Amen. So Caprice was clear about her poem. Amen. You gotta tell. Wait a minute. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him. Hear my faintest cry. Answer. Feel a little prayer will turn and feel the fire burning. Have a little talk. Well, make it all right. We used to run it. All right. All right. All right. All right. Have a little talk. Brokenness can be contagious because y'all broken people like each other. Brokenness is disruptive. Y'all hang out because misery love company. I'm going to help y'all. Listen, you wonder why you don't have no praise. Look at who you hang out with. Wonder why you don't have no joy. Watch your circle. Yeah. Amen. Joy is contagious. Peace is contagious. And so is brokenness and misery. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you're married, you're hanging out with somebody that's unhappy in their marriage. Amen. Watch it. Don't have nothing to say nice about marriage. I rebuke you. Bye. Now, I don't know why we go to silly people and broken people to try to get help. Brokenness is destructive. A broken spirit and a broken heart will destroy your relationships. Am I right, Deacon? It will destroy it. Yes, it will. Bitterness in your spirit over what your mama did and your daddy did. You can be a good relationship and carry that brokenness in a relationship. Amen. And you wonder why nobody gets along with you. Your brokenness will wreck your job. You can have a good job and your spirit be broken. Amen. <laughs> and unpack your children. Why are my children acting out? Because you transferred your broken spirit to your children. Right, right. I think that the church say amen. amen. I don't know why Johnny acting that way, baby. Look in the mirror. Right. Because he learned brokenness from you. Right. He learned how to act out from you. Y'all don't they don't like that. But I'm gonna rebuke that that generational curse. That means you gotta rebuke it in you first. Right. Sorry, what you learned in you. It's in you. It's called generational. The spirit didn't just drop on your child from nowhere. It's generational. Then get the spirit from the pastor. Because my kids got my spirit. Say amen. amen. He got my spirit. Amen. They know my son. He got my spirit, don't he? Amen. amen. Walking, talking, looking, thinking, just like his father. So when he was young, I rebuked every spirit that wasn't like God. 
Let them be humble, Jesus. Amen. Let them be nice. Don't let them be uppity, Jesus. Amen. Don't let them be uppity. Don't let them. Be uppity. Don't let them be. Amen. Let them be humble, Jesus. Hallelujah. Whatever you do, Jesus, let them be nice to the saints of God. He's worth <laughs> Amen. Don't let that spirit that the pastor can have, amen, that came down his line with Edna Patricia, Reversal Louise, and Ida, and Johnny. Don't let it come down the line. Amen. So I mentioned broken people are It's disruptive. It'll keep you from getting free. So society does it to us, too. I'm almost done. Yep, I got two more minutes. Not society will do it. Because, you know, society will, will, will co-sign your brokenness. Yes, yeah. yes. Every time. You know, so broken is this. Broken, guys. Courtney is this. And so I put that moniker on Courtney. Every time I see Courtney, Courtney broken. And so what I'll do is I'll treat Courtney like broken. I don't treat her like what God sees. I'll treat her broken. And so when Courtney comes in and Courtney's broken, I treat her like broken. Then Courtney says I'm broken, so I might as well stay broken because that's how I get a attention from being broken. Then we get upset with Courtney because when she says she want to be delivered and want to be better, then we turn around and say Courtney thinks she's better than me. Whoa! Out of your presence, watch what I'm saying. Out of your presence, and found a real resurrected Jesus outside of you in your mess. And then when she come and be nice to you, say, "Oh, she thinks she's better now." <laughs> you know, she is. She is. she is. She's better, not better than you. She's better than the person she was last week. I don't have no problem with you being better. Just be better than the person you were last week. Right. Society says you're broken, and so we isolate you. That's what happens in the scripture in the ancient times when people were broken, they put them outside. Uh -huh. right. How do you know, Pastor? The woman with the issue of love, outside. Uh -huh. Woman caught of adultery, put her out. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh -huh. Person that had leprosy, uh -huh. put them out. Put them out. Everybody put them out. And the church do that today. The people see that sick and broken. The church don't try to heal them and restore them. The church put them out. But that's not Jesus. Jesus went around the broken. I'm just going to help y'all. Amen. Church added, they don't want to deal with broken people. And I'll tell you why, because they don't have no power. And they're afraid that the, they're just like the scribes and Pharisees. They think that that stuff, amen, according to Jewish law, if you touched a broken person or a contaminated person, they believe that it will come off on them. How in, how in the world can church people think that healing and bringing deliverance to people will fall on them? But we don't deal with them. We don't like them. They're not allowed. Like you died for them. And you rose from the grave for them. And you're going to be the arbiter of somebody's healing. And who's in and who's out. But I heard Paul say, and such were some of them. Amen. I'm going to help you. You were broken up one day. And if we look a little bit under that fine veneer, there's still some brokenness and particle wood underneath it. Under the veneer. Because the veneer looks good. Should I explain what veneer is for some of y'all? I'm going to explain for the young people what veneer is. Amen. The organ right there looks like it's solid wood. And that one is. But I'm going to give an example. Veneer would be, amen, when you, what they do is they press the wood down. Little broken pieces of wood. Amen. Particle pieces of particle wood. They glue it together. And what they do is they, they put a fancy piece of wood over top of it. I'm going to preach it here. Amen. They put it over top of it. They'll put, they'll put mahogany expensive wood over top of cheap particle wood. Uh -huh. And sometimes if you're not a good customer, amen, and you look at it and say, oh, that's a wonderful piece of furniture. Mm. And then they charge you up, and then what happens? Under the pressures of life, oh, go God Almighty with moisture and heat, amen, and cold and heat and fire happens. What you'll see is the ends of the corner of the wood will turn up. That's what it is. That's what it is. And see, in my day, you bought solid mahogany. Right. Solid oak. Amen. Y'all been to my house. I don't have particle. I have the real kind of hard wood that if, if my dog scratches it, you bring out the sander and the sander goes and, and man, and then you polish it over again because it's the real deal. Some of the saints got the knee. Uh -huh. <laughs> Amen. It ain't real. <laughs> and when the pressures of life come, they fall apart. All the pieces. They fall apart. Many, now God said, let me tell y'all this. Many in community are broken because society has denied them wholeness. Wow. Because wow. I'm telling you, part of your wholeness is to be in community. Right. And what community will do is tell you, you're not whole, we're not going to let you in. Right. Ah, y'all didn't hear what I'm saying. 
Amen. Listen, Caprice, you're not like us. But Caprice said, I've been made whole. Jesus healed me. And then the church people say, no, you're not. And Caprice said, well, that's the church people. They must know God. So I'm going to question what God did for me last night at the altar. Don't do that. Don't do that. Wholeness is liberating to the mind. Yes, it is. For some of us, our body is well, but our spirit's foul. Right. Our spirit is broken. Uh huh. Wholeness is revitalizing one's body, renewing and enriching one's intimate relationships. You can't be whole and be mad at Shadika. I don't get no amen. 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 You can't be whole and be mad at the pastor. Come on. Amen. You can't be whole and be mad at. Um, <laughs> At Matthew, because he's loud. Because I know some saints to be upset when these little babies be loud because they can't hear the word. Turn up your hearing aid, baby. Let the babies be a baby. Right. Amen. In this church, a baby, that's why they call babies. Amen. So we don't have no saints in here to get mad because the little baby screaming. Amen. Except you become as a child, you won't even enter and thank God for the babies. So, you know, when he's 10 and 15, he can't do that. These ones right here, I knew them for a long time. We let them run around while they was two and three. When they got older, Robbie said, sit your tail down and keep your mouth shut. Right. But why did like this young man? He can sleep in church. Amen. Right. I'm gonna help him. Don't disrupt him. He might need a little need a little nap. Y'all might need a break from him. <laughs> Amen. So, <laughs> Amen. Because I was taught that if the, even if the child is asleep, the word will penetrate them in the sleep. I come up Pentecostal. Amen. There's enough word in this church, enough power in this church that he can wake up and say, "Oh." And the Lord said, "I should be whole." <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. So, Amen. Have you not seen it? One time I preached the word, be not unequally yoked, and I didn't think that uh, Ariana knew what it was. Pastor, what does that mean? I said, baby, I want you to sleep and not pay no attention. And she knew what I'm, be not unequally yoked me. All right. Healing from brokenness heals your relationship with God. Healing is a return to stability. Because when we're not whole, we're not stable. Healing is a return to community. What are you saying, Pastor? That I'm not whole without community? That is correct. Listen, there's a story in the Bible where Jesus healed the leper. Jesus said to the leper, you're whole. Go show yourself. I don't know where I'm going. Go show yourself to the priest. Why go show yourself to the priest? To show that Jesus, can, God can heal you? No. So you can take your sacrifice. Right. See, if you don't take your sacrifice back to the community, the community won't be able to rejoice with you in your healing. Right. They won't be able to embrace you and bring you back into community. Oh, Y'all hear what I'm saying? All this stuff, I'm going to know God on myself. I'm going to stay home. I'm going to be spiritual. Baby, you're going to be cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Right. Amen. You're going to be given over to strong delusion. Right. Sitting at home speaking in tongues to yourself strong with no order. Strong delusion. So I'm going to get a word from the Lord for myself. Sometimes you do and sometimes it's your flesh. You need to be in community, amen, because community holds you accountable for your spiritual stuff. Yes, uh, yes, that's, that's why we struggle being in church because we don't need to be held, held accountable for I can hear God for myself. Let me help you. Judaism and early Christianity was a community religion. like that. All of a sudden, I want to be independent because I don't want to deal with the saints. You ought to have enough grace to deal with the saints and eat the fish and spit out the bones. You should be. Because all of that speaking in tongues, amen, you ought to be able to bind the devil. Right, right there. All right. I had some church mothers I had to bind when they said I wasn't worthy. I said, watch this. I'm bringing my praise to the priest. Right. Now you hear what I'm saying? Dion, I'm a dance in front of the priest. I ain't worried about what the saints say because you worried about what the saints say when you get healed from your brokenness while you're walking in the temple. They're going to talk about you. Yes, they are. Because they're not going to know what God did. Amen. So you might as well come on in the temple and give God your praise. Amen. Because the saints, amen. Because the saints, her child last night, do you know what she did last night? But you didn't, you didn't meet Jesus who healed me two steps before. Right. When he saved my soul, you weren't there. You don't even know. That's the heart. That's the heart. <clears throat> Go on, please. Show yourself to the priest. Amen. That's why I show up at church so y'all can hold me accountable for my healing. Right. Ooh. I like testimony service. You know, the Lord saved me, sanctified me, filled me with the Holy Ghost. Not the Lord gave me a car. Not the Lord paid my bill. 
No, God saved me from a miserable life of sin. I even heard a preacher say, well, my life was a miserable. I said, okay, then you're not going to be saved. Okay, this is good. Amen. So we don't testify that no more. You know, we get up and talk about cars. The Lord's going to pay my bill. Maybe you ought to pray God for wisdom to manage your money. Wisdom, son. When I go down to God, everything you see, I went down to God and said, God, give me wisdom to manage my money. Right. Y'all don't like that part. Right. Y'all want to come to church for the ching ching and the hallelujah and run around and speak in tongues. <laughs> amen. And then you do. You, amen. And then you don't have no money. Amen. Can't pay your bills. God, give me wisdom. Young people, go to God for wisdom. Because right. wisdom is, a, is the principal thing. Right. Good God Almighty, with wisdom comes understanding. God will give you wisdom on how to manage money. Amen. And you'll have $50 and have more money and more prosperity than a millionaire. Right. Right. Y'all, did y'all hear that, young people? Hey, Amen. Don't even run with the Joneses. They used to talk about pastors. And look at him. He corny. <laughs> but look at me now. Because God gave me wisdom. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Wisdom to manage my finances. Wisdom to know what relationships to be in. And there were some relationships I wanted to be in. I was mad when God broke them up. I was mad because God broke them up. I was like, that's the one. I don't ain't getting no amens in here right now. Y'all don't have no amens when I speak my truth. Amen. There were some people I wanted to hook up with instead of hooking up with Jesus. And, and God got in the way of it. And I got mad about it. But right now, when I look back over my life, y'all hear what I'm saying? So glad that God broke up that hook. Anybody got a praise because I broke up that hook. See, I'm praising God for the wrong thing. I pray, see, I'm praising God that he broke up that hookup. I, son, I thought that was the one. I could have danced on that right now. Amen. Y'all hear what? Capri, I could have danced on that. Amen. I thought that was the one. Yes, I did. I was upset when they broke my heart. I thought it was the one. I thought. I was mad then, but I'm happy now. Come on. That's the one. That's the one. Can't heal yourself. Can't heal yourself. I need Tasha to help heal me. Tasha don't know. Yesterday she helped heal me. She like, oh, I'm not the pastor. Just her presence, because sometimes being present is enough to heal somebody else. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Thaddeus is showing up was enough to heal me. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. 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 As a leader, y'all don't know leaders need healing. And I want none of my leaders. Get ready to go. I want to help y'all. Stop faking it. Leaders need healing. Amen, yeah. amen. Sometimes when you show up, it heals my insecurity. Sir, sometimes. Sometimes. What? Y'all don't, sorry, this is, the preachers will come next week. Amen. It helps. It helps. Helps my insecurity. When you're in your place, it helps my insecurity. Yes, it does. It, it heals me. Show up. When you show up and you have the ministry of presence, it heals me. So stop trying to self-diagnose yourself. Amen. Because y'all know y'all self-diagnose. And pastor is pastor does that. Amen. He'll go and he'll have a pain and say, What's in my medicine cabinet? Because I think it's this. <laughs> One time pastor did that. He had a he had something on his head. And he said, Oh, I don't know what this is. Oh my God, what is it? Oh my God. I went to the medicine cabinet and put some cream on it and it exploded. Amen. I had to be put in the hospital because I had shingles. Amen. And the shingles ended up in, almost in my eye because pastor self-diagnosed himself. Sometimes you need somebody in your life to say, fool, go to the doctor. Amen. And I'm saying to somebody, fool, come to Jesus. You've been doing this on your own. Fool. Stop self-diagnosing. Stop self-diagnosing yourself. Jesus knows all about your struggle. Yes, he does. He will guide you till the day. There's not a friend. Stop doing that, baby. Stop, 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 stop. Be in community with the, with the saints that know it. Like I told you, some of y'all need to be in the room, but some of y'all need to be outside the room. Right. Get in the room with the saints that know how to tell you how to push. Right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh -huh. Some of us can help you push. Push your promise out. Right. Some of us can look and say, mm -hmm, I know what that is, honey. You said Cause some of y'all not depressed, you say. Right, there's a difference. Make sure that's not mine. That might have been Capri's. Amen. All right, let's get ready to go. Play some song. You get ready to go.
<clears throat> I'm glad that, how many of you glad that God made you whole? Amen. See, everybody not happy. Some people want to be broken. Amen. What's going to happen if Jesus make me whole? Amen. Then the people might see me differently. Wholeness requires you to act it. Wholeness requires you to come back to community. Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying. Because in ancient times, to be made whole means you are restored back to the ability to add value to society. Society said when you were sick, you had no value. Y'all study the Bible. Amen. Study. Amen. You were outside. You go to the priest. The priest says, Woo, Gigi's ready. She's ready to be in community. So I pray today that someone, amen, learns how to be whole. All right, let's stand. Thank you. Pastor, I'm getting...